All righty. The Fauquier County School Board meeting is called to order. And at this time, if everyone would please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you would please, Ms. Callahan, take the roll. <laughs> okay, thank you. And we will entertain a motion. Yeah, I move that the school board adopt the agenda as written. Second. Motion and a second that the school board adopt the agenda as written. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And the motion carries. And we will move to a special, excuse me, special presentation. Ms. Pulver. <coughs> Oh, no, she corrected it in ours. Yeah. Okay. The Dominion, or I mean the uh, VSBA. Yeah. Madam Chair, Dr. Jack, school board members, this is Patrick Welch. He uh, works for uh, Dominion Power. Uh, he's a former Fa Fauquier High School graduate, uh, yeah, class yeah. of 99. School, okay. <laughs> and um, I'll give this to Patrick right now. He's going to okay. decrease it. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just speak to everybody and not have to look at the back of my head. Except they might want you yeah. on the microphone. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, <clears throat> as a Faulkner High graduate, you don't always get the opportunity to revisit you know, places you've been and, and to give back to the community. But through Ms. Pulver's efforts uh, at the Outdoor Lab and through Dominion, who I currently work for, we've been able to accomplish that. Uh, we've done several projects up there for, right. for the outdoor lab. Um, and then we also have another check uh, for further uh, environmental education for the county. Uh, however, she sees fit, the need may, may fit. Uh, so I'd like to give that to her thank now uh, from Dominion. Um, and just thank you for thank putting you in the, the time and the effort to, to re revive um, the, the outdoor classroom, the experience for the kids. Uh, and, and for giving me the opportunity to, to give back as well. And I appreciate that very much. Well, thank you very thank much. From Dominion. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> what year did you graduate? Uh, 99. 99, okay. All right. <laughs> Ms. You. Pulver, are you excited? Do you know oh. what you're doing with this money? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you got it all spent, right? Yeah, spent already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have thank that you. new AP environmental class this year, so oh. I'm trying to spend oh. it. Oh, great. Time. Stuff Excellent. Excellent. Great. Thank you Great. So well, much. I know what you've done out there so far has been wonderful and much greatly needed. Uh, I, I so. can tell you from, from having a nine year old and a 10 year old, they want to know when do I get to go. <laughs> Daddy gets to go play the pond all day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, it, it's already at the yeah, Let me tell you, it'll go quick. Let me tell you. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. But, uh, it's, you, know, you don't realize it, but it's, uh, it has really inspired uh, some of the young people. Yeah, that's great. Great, great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Okay, we move to announcements. The school board will attend a VSBA professional development seminar Tuesday, September 10th, 2013 at 5 o'clock. There will be a personnel committee meeting Wednesday, September 11th at 8 a.m. in the school administration conference room. There will be a finance committee meeting Wednesday, September 11th at 4.45, note the change, yes, in the school administration conference room. The Mountain Vista Governing School Governing Board meeting will be held on Thursday, September 12th at 8 a.m. in the Warren County School Board office, and I'm assuming Duke remembers. Mm -hmm. The uh, Chairman's Night will be Monday, September 23rd at 5 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a School Board Work Session Monday, September 23rd at 6 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a Building Committee meeting Thursday, September 26th at 9.30 a.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a School Board Retreat from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m at the Inn at Kelly's Ford, Saturday, September the 28th. There will be a School Health Advisory Committee <coughs> meeting Wednesday, October 2nd at 8 a.m. in the Central Complex Building Conference Room. There will be a Special Education Advisory Committee meeting 
Wednesday, October 2nd at 5.30 p.m. in the Central Complex Building A conference room. There will be a school support council meeting Wednesday, October 2nd at 7 p.m. in the school administration conference room. And the next school board meeting is Monday, October 14th at 7 p.m. right here in the Warren Green building. And we, remo we move to response to citizens' time, and I do not believe that there is a response, and we move to citizens' time. Community involvement is an important component of a successful school division, and the school board welcomes public input. Please be respectful of all speakers and limit your comments to three minutes. <coughs> Matters relating to personal or personnel is issues cannot be discussed. And I've got two names, if you would please, um, when you come to the podium, state your name and your magisterial district, and Amy Adams is first. Um, I believe this is a forum I can come to you and talk in. Um, I am a, my name is Amy Adams. I am a county um, resident. I have five children. And where and do you live? I in live in the Plains. Okay. Okay. So um, sure. <laughs> I've never been here before, so I okay. don't know. Um, um, I've driven a school bus for 10 years oh, wow. um, in this county and, and previous counties a couple years before, um, and I love my job. Um, I'm coming to you to um, just make you aware of some issues that we're having with one of the new forms that we've received. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the child waiver forms. Um, I took some notes. Okay. So I knew I'd be a little nervous. Um, the child waiver forms we were given for all the kindergartners, first, second, and third graders because they cannot be let off the bus. Um, Mm -hmm. by themselves, which is understandable. Um, some of the forms are working great. If they're allowed to be off the bus by themselves, the parents check the form. When we get to the bus stop, we can open the door and let the children go, which is great. Um, other forms, um, I'm not sure if it's the form itself or parents not understanding how to fill out the form, but I do have forms where mom has filled out every grandparent and aunt and uncle and neighbor um, but dad's name isn't on the form. And the one day when dad takes a day off work, I don't know dad, and his name isn't on my form. So I have to question dad. Dad's not very happy. Right. Um, mm. And mom's name is a sloppy signature. So I don't know who I can let the student off with. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there, are there any other issues? You might want to just... I mean, we, we'd be happy to listen, Sure. but it might help if you just sat down with Ms. Bourne. With, okay, yeah. And because my other concern, to too, is, is just parent responsibility. I know I'm a parent of five children, and if you take the time to listen in the afternoon, which I know sometimes they say that you guys can listen in, um, somewhere along the way, parents need to be informed that they are responsible for getting the children off the bus or having somebody be there. That is not halfway down the road, standing on their front porch. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I know the mom, and I would recognize her, but as a substitute bus driver, these poor substitute bus drivers have no idea who these kids are. And when you pull up and you have 20 kids trying to run off your bus, and, and you don't know their names, and you have a stack of papers, and you have parents that are getting angry. It's getting extremely frustrating. Uh, I can, yes, I'm sure. So um, I just don't know who we need to talk to to get it all worked out. Uh, we'll start. Ms. Bourne will you? Okay. work with you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So should I meet with you sometime? Or? I'll step out and talk to you when you're done. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank For you. driving a bus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Misty Quinn. Hi, Hi, I'm Misty Quinn from Cedar Run. I was here last year a number of times. I'm here over the same issue, unfortunately. Um, it's our bus stop. Um, our bus stop comes down what's called Whitewood Lane, comes to a dead end. You can make a left or a right. They're both cul-de-sacs. The rule is a bus cannot go in a cul-de-sac that's less than two-tenths of a mile. It's a money-saving issue. To the right of the cul-de-sac, I drew you guys a picture because I've been here multiple times. I thought maybe this would help. <laughs> this direction, it's just over two tenths of a mile. Okay? This direction, where I live, is under one tenth of a mile. So the bus refuses, well, the bus doesn't, but not right. allowed to come our direction. 
Last year, there was at least one child this direction. This year, there are zero. The bus is still not allowed to come my direction. So as you see, as it hits this T, it has to go one way or the other because it has to turn around at the end of call stack. It can turn around to either one. It currently is going over two tenths of a mile to pick up nobody when it can come less than one tenth of a mile to pick up five children, two of which are kindergartners. Instead, those five children have to stand at an intersection. I have photos of the intersection because although the safety issue that I argued last year you did not agree with, I do believe there is a safety concern. So, if you'd like to look at the photos. I've, I've been there. I, I know. haven't. <laughs> you didn't agree, so maybe you can pass them on. Yeah. Photo number one shows the bus coming towards the bus stop. You will notice that that is only about 20 yards away. You cannot see the stop sign. It is completely not visible. And that is the only direction that has to stop. The other two directions do not have to stop. So, the second picture is about 10 yards farther. And you can see that you now barely can see the stop sign. And you only can see it because last year the county came up and tr came out and trimmed those shrubs. As you can see, they are almost halfway up again. Now, so where the, on this picture are these kids standing? Right there. Right. That, in is, right that in intersection the corner is right there. Yeah. Okay. It's not a corner. It's a three-way intersection. So they are standing in the middle. There are no sidewalks. That is personal property. I have no else for the kids to stand. Two of the directions do not have stops. Only one direction does. And as you can see, you can't see it. And the final picture is the picture from the bus stop looking towards the left, which is where our houses are, where the five kids live in that direction. And as you can see, you see no houses. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking this way. Okay. So you can see no houses. It's not a safe area. I mean, it's a safe area. I'm not trying to say that. It's our neighborhood. But there, <laughs> it's not like we're standing in front of someone's home on a sidewalk where we can be out of the way of traffic. So I'm asking you once again, can we make this change? And, and I apologize, but I, I would rather an answer tonight because I've, I can't give you, we can't well, give we you an answer tonight. tonight. But we'll check we anyway. Okay, we, can't, so, we can't give you an answer. Tonight. Okay, you can't give it, me an answer tonight. Who, who makes this decision? Can I have that answer? Uh, well, the same person that's out there talking to, but I mean, we can. Okay, the, the problem is, is that individual, I believe, is the one that then called me can't. on Friday informing me that the bus will not come your direction. You will walk down to the bus stop. I got that call on Friday. So that's why I'm coming to you. So okay. do you have any pull in this decision? We will. We've yes. heard you tonight. Yes. Okay. Is okay. there any questions, anything else I can clarify more? I have two questions. Yes. Your children are middle elementary school age? No. There are two kindergartners of those five. There is a first grader, there's a third grader, and a fifth grader. The fifth grader has zero parents on either end. She is a fifth grader, but she's completely by herself. The other four children are myself and the house across from us. Literally, our driveways face each other. So if that car, if that bus uh, comes to the end, which it used to do three years ago, it stops and four children, two of which are kindergartners, again, a first grader and a third grader, get picked up at the end of their driveway. Well, is it a full-size bus? Yes, it's a yeah. full-size bus and yeah. it has can turned around many times in that, then, yes. Well, but really, can it exactly safely turn around on that point it one mile turn? It fully around? turns around without having to back up, if that's your question. It can right. fully turn around in our cold stack, yes. As easily as it can in that point two mile? As, right? as easily, I don't know, but this one often actually has cars parked in it. Ours never does, I will be honest with you. So if, that's a, if there's a car parked in it, I believe it would not. That one might be... I honestly, I can't guarantee you it's the exact same size. I, I, won't, I won't say that because I'm not 100% sure. But we never have cars parked in it. And many, many times, unfortunately, very recently, she got fired. The bus driver turns around fully without any backing up in our cul-de-sac. We'll, Anything else? We're going to, no. So we'll check into it. We'll we follow can't up. say anything now because, I mean, I've never even been there. Okay, this so is the I wouldn't want to say anything for me at least okay. before I've been and there and heard the story about why this is. A and I understand that. And can I, can I say one thing though? We've had the same argument for two years. And you, no, we have. We have. I apologize. We have. We have. Yes. And we've, she's sent people out. You've come out and you've never agreed with me. And so, and so here I am again, a third year. The only change this year than previous years, because last year, there was one fifth grader on the other side who very easily could have walked to that corner safely on his own rather than sending, again, there were kindergartners last year to that colder okay. corner. Okay. We just, time's up. Um, we've got it. Okay. And I just, we'll, like she said, because she hasn't been there, but I'm saying yeah, multiple people have over the last two years. So and it's, we know how to okay. contact you. 
I can what give you any you more information you'd like. Information with I'd be happy to this tell one. him. Yes. Is it Greenwood? Greenwood yeah. Way. Whitewood and Greenwood. Whitewood Drive White goes into Greenwood Green Way. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you both. It's bus two for HM Pearson. And the Misty Quinn. Okay. Misty yeah. Quinn. Okay, Thank you. great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move to reports. We'll start. Where would you like? Would you like to start, yeah. Mr. Borg? Uh, yeah, let me just get to my <laughs> notes real quick. We can find out. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll, I'll report. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> absolutely. Um, congratulations to everybody on the start of school. I think we said that on the 26th, but again, uh, uh, great stuff going on. Um, I've been to a lot of back to school nights as a parent, which has been very fun, um, very interesting. A lot of, uh, I, I will tell you, I think there is a, a, a real energy in our schools right now. Um, and there are, uh, I think, more people paying a lot more attention to uh, some of the new programs we have coming on and the ideas of educating uh, children in the 21st century. Um, and I think a lot of that, too, stems from our BYOD. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Policy, and it really is. There are people who disagree with it, people who love it, but I think it's really focusing people on how we educate children, how we use great tools to do that. Um, I also say I'm very excited about our school health advisory board. Mm -hmm. um, we are uh, reestablishing the work we have with our wellness champions. Uh, there are a lot of great topics that our committee has brought up, um, and uh, a lot of great discussion quite frankly, and for an advisory board, I think that's important. Um, we will be bringing forward some ideas on uh, topics uh, for, for this board to consider, probably to doc, through Dr. Jack, about ideas that we have in terms of the, the advisory um, you know, comments from that board. Uh, but I will say I'm very excited about it this year, uh, once again. So. Why don't you talk about walk to school since you probably know more about that. Yeah, uh, this October, and I think it can be almost any time during October, but uh, through Parks and Rec, uh, last year we had three schools involved in walk to school, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're trying to get some more visibility again for that. Um, challenging kids to be outside, walk to school. Not every school in our division, it does it make sense or is it even feasible, but there may be opportunities for them to get to school and have kids walk around, uh, you know, uh, you know, parents driving in the mm -hmm. morning or something like that. Uh, but we're we're looking into that. Uh, I know one of the coordinators uh, at Bradley happens to be my wife, so <laughs> she's uh, she's running, she's trying to help work that. But I want to thank Parks and Rec too for their support of that. It's really important, I think, for us to challenge kids to actually get out there, take themselves to school. I think it builds confidence for them, it builds responsibility, plus the exercise is important for them. So we're, we'll be bringing some more uh, items up about that this year. But um, right now, it's really only three schools that participated last year. We don't know if all three are going to participate this year. And that's October 9th. 9th. Right. Okay. Um, Ms. Reardon. Wow. Uh, just a tail on to uh, one of Brian's uh, topics for exercise. Uh, Brookside Communities is having a 5K on October the 26th, and all of the proceeds are going to benefit Auburn Middle School's library. Going to try to update some of the technology and, and things in the library, but it's it's wherever they want it to go. That's where, you know, whatever they want to do with it. Um, I would encourage everybody to come on out. You can walk it. You can run it. Um, you can crawl it, you know. <laughs> For those of you that are runners, it will be professionally timed. Um, and we're still looking for sponsors. And we're also having a one mile fun run for the kids. And um, all the, if you participate, you get a t-shirt. And um, we're gonna have sponsors that are gonna set up some booths and stuff and show off some of the uh, businesses from the area. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have music, we're gonna have some light refreshments. So I would encourage everybody to check out the website um, and, or go on active.com and just punch in Brookside Fall 5K. That's it. Ms. Wolf. Um, just again, 
uh, big congratulations to the opening of Fokker High School because I know that took a lot of work of a lot of people's time and energy and it was amazing. So that was great. Um, a couple things, I just want to say a couple topics that we're going to talk about in our health advisory committee is we're going to talk about uh, get stats on teen pregnancy and also on substance abuse in the county, how children and families and how that statistics are trending to see if we need to do something about that. So those are the couple things we're going to be talking about. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say, thank you to Ms. Callahan. She coordinated on October 9th. Um, it's going to be a couple, a few of our legislators are going to visit our school, come to Fauquier High School, Senator Vogel and Delegate Webert. And I know Delegate Cole and Lingenfelter have been invited. I don't know if they've RSVP'd yet. But from about 9.30 to noon, we're going to be showcasing our um, Fauquier High School and all our career and technology education outstanding programs that we have to our delegates. So. Thank you for organizing that. Um, we haven't had a personnel. We're having a meeting on Monday, or Wednesday rather, and building hasn't met. But we did have Parks and Rec, and I'll bring you up to date on a couple of things there. At the last meeting, we had some officials from the town talking about the timber fence trail. And somebody just asked. And, um, we did have a, a supervisor there also. So they were looking for some sort of a commitment from schools just to say that we're on board. Now remind and, me where that is. Well, it, it's not is nowhere at this point, other oh. than we what they wanted to know is if we are in agreement that we want to work with them. We want to work with them. So that they can finish the trail from where it is now over at the end of Timber Fence Park to get it over to the, the wharf. wharf. And that would necessitate them crossing school's property. So not knowing where it's gonna go, but we certainly um, are in agreement that we will work with them if we can. And I think we ended it by saying that they're gonna, I think they're now ready to move forward and, and have some professional design, come up with some design options. And bring it to us. Yeah. yeah, they I just didn't want to go through a lot of work if we weren't going to be if on we weren't board gonna, right. and No, that would be a great so. plus yeah. for the whole community to have that opened up to more. Right. I'll it's bring the motivation the if they bring the cash. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not and, looking this way for the cash. So. And then um, in your district, the Pierce Trail, mm -hmm. that's moving forward. That's good. And um, we, there needs to be some discussion on as to where it's going to end because I believe actually the fire department needs to get into that discussion as far as their property on, that's back there also. So anyway, that's um, moving forward and as is safe routes to school. And I believe the negotiations are complete right, in a, to yes. acquiring that last little oh, piece of property. Good. Good. Um, so that's moving forward. So we're going to be walking everywhere. So do, do they need yep. some kind of formal thing from us or just uh -uh. Really, like, we're a lot of exercise? Yeah. 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 No, I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Dr. Jack. Uh, I just would report that we had our first uh, um, school support council meeting of the year last week. It was very well attended. Uh, it was a very good meeting, a very, very, very good, energetic, energized group of parents. Uh, so we're looking at some different uh, projects, actually, that were sort of uh, put out as uh, oh. potentials for the next school year, which I think is really the role of the School Support Council, among, among other things, communication, and then taking on projects. So we're going to be talking about some different things as the, the uh, school year progresses. One idea that was put out that I'm really interested in is uh, uh, the Farm to Schools program. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's a really good program. Logistically, I don't know if it could or would work in Fauquier County, I don't know. But in my short time here, we have a lot of farms. We do. And um, <laughs> a, a lot of hungry kids. So something that really got my attention during the meeting that I'm going to be talking more with SSC about. So very good meeting. Good. OK. Then we move to Ms. Kotoff, financial management report. You have before you the report preliminary as of June 30th. Um, it's the same um, as you've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they hope to close the books today at 5. It was delayed. Um, it's, we're still working on our reports um, for the state. 
What we were looking at is still at 1.3 million, just over 1%. We'll be taking to the Finance Committee on Wednesday a recommendation for year end. Okay. Um, the main pieces are going to be student information system, um, four buses, and um, energy management controls. Those are our main kind of pieces, some others. But um, that'll be coming out. It'll go to the Finance Committee, then it comes to the school board at its work session, then to the next meeting, and then adoption the following meeting. Okay. Great. Um, and by then we'll have um, uh, it'll so it'll go to the board of supervisors in November at the same time that the audit report's coming out for verification of the numbers. Okay. Brian, you started. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I I got it. Okay. Anybody else? No. Nope. Right. Thank, Thank you. And next, human resource department is Downs. Good evening. In front of you, you have the human resources monthly report. Uh, on recruitment update, we have certified vacancies. We have four remaining to be filled. And for classified, we currently have 15. The eight school nutrition workers have been filled. Oh, so okay. we're starting oh. to narrow it down. <laughs> Good. We still are in need of school custodians, so we are actively recruiting for those and running ads. Yeah. Any questions this evening? Okay. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We move to consent agenda. <coughs> Madam Chair, I move that the school board approve the following minutes of the August 26th school board meeting and work session, monthly bills and payroll, personnel actions, revisions to section 5, personnel policies 1-1, one one, excuse me, 5-1.5, 5-2.8, and 5-3.7, and revision to section 5, personnel policy 5-3.5. <laughs> <Second>. <laughs> Motion and a second that the school board approve the minutes of the August 26th school board meeting and work session, the monthly bills and payroll, personnel actions, revisions to section 5, personnel policies 5-1.5, 5 5-2.8, .5, and 5-3.7, and revision to section 5, personnel policy 5-3.5. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. We move to information items, and Dr. Check's going to give us a report on the opening of school. Well, uh, as you already know, school opening was very good, very smooth. Uh, and I did want to point a couple things out because uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited and proud of the fact that the, the message that we've been um, well, sharing and the, the subjects we've been talking about versus related to 21st century teaching and learning, uh, STEM initiatives, uh, some principals and some directors and uh, uh, senior staff have really taken on some great pilot projects. And I just want to list a few that you may not even be aware of out there. Um, Bromfield Elementary is uh, piloting a, a STEM program for all grade levels. They basically traded a position rather than hiring a reading specialist, they hired a STEM specialist. Uh, to work with all grade levels. The tech camp for next summer, that planning group is, is, uh, has been meeting and uh, putting together some really good ideas for next summer, some really meaningful tech camps uh, for elementary through high school age kids. Uh, working on pro uh, putting together, Patty Kershaw is doing this work, STEM advisory group uh, to sort of uh, help chart the course for the next, uh, I, what I call it is the now, the soon, and the later, sort of chart that course as we move down the road. Uh, science fair, uh, this is very exciting. We are moving forward with our first annual regional science fair. Very excited and uh, have a benefactor who, I won't jinx it by naming any names, but uh, a benefactor who's willing to uh, put some resources uh, towards that program and uh, we, got, we have someone agreed to serve as the coordinator. So very exciting. That would be a division wide, not every grade level. Um, right now it's in the draft phase, but it wouldn't be every grade level to start with. We'd start with um, middle high school and then add all grade levels later on. And then I'm really happy to please, I'm pleased to know that folks are already using the outdoor lab. So Pam, thank you for that. I, you know, I'm just getting wind of some folks who are already using it. That's very exciting. Um, really pleased with that. And then the mathematics potential project, which uh, Dr. Mitchell is spearheading, which is really this putting, putting the wheels on, expanding the math opportunities for kids more higher, higher level math opportunities for students, removing barriers for students taking upper level math. Um, so there's some really good things going on, but most importantly, it's folks who are taking the initiative 
and or energized, as, as Brian said, and who are sort of taking a risk and being willing to step out and rather than hiring a reading specialist, hire a STEM specialist instead. That's, that takes a bit of a risk. And uh, so anyways, wanted to thank all those people. It's a lot of different people involved with that, but just excited about uh, the direction we're going sp uh, specifically with STEM, which includes math uh, and some other things. So just wanted to mention those things to you. You've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question about the science fair? Mm -hmm. uh, you said it was regional and then divisional. Is it regional or is it only our? No, it's it's going to be a regional fair, but not it's regional public school. This is all draft, by okay. the way. Okay. Yeah. Fauquier County Public Schools and then homeschool students and uh, private school students. So they would all have the opportunity to compete, um, and it would be for starting off middle and high school grades. But we would want. We were. We're hoping, and our goal is to make it a big tent, involve as many folks as we can in it. Um, and the idea is to complete it, the fair, by the end of February, so that then students could go on and compete in the, in truly in the regional uh, fair. The winners could uh, statewide. So that's sort of the goal. That's why it's we're a bit of a rush right now to make sure we get this thing off the ground, do it right, so kids who are who are the winners can move on and compete statewide. Did I get all that right, Dr. Mitchell? Mm -hmm. Don't okay. forget BMI. BMI. Wow. wow. How fun. That's great. Okay, that it? That's it. Okay, thank you. And an enrollment report from Ms. Kotov. Um, yes, each year I come back um, and report on the uh, enrollment as the, of the day after Labor Day. We always have a, a jump at the end of the first week to that point. Right. Normally it's about 50 or 60. This year it actually jumped to 90, 94. So it puts us slightly ahead of where we were last year, which is good. That's what we were projecting right. for ADM is about the same as last year. So revenues look good at this point. Um, it also looks good, I think, when we um, sit down at the September 30th number to do our 10-year enrollment projections. I think that this may be an indication that we have stopped de having, having declining enrollment and we actually will either level out or maybe increase, which is um, a good thing. So okay. any questions on the numbers? We looked specifically at one of the schools, Brumfield, because mm -hmm. they ha um, dropped um, significantly and it had to do with the fifth grade class of 100 and some students moving on up to middle school and an elementary, a kindergarten mm -hmm. class of only like 85, I think it was. Wow. So there was like a 24 enrollment difference in that alone. So we do have spots of that. Okay. Okay, questions, anybody? Okay, uh, thank you. And Ms. Downs. Some more personnel. Yes, policies. good evening. Tonight in front of you, you have the remaining of the policies from Section 5. That includes Article 4, Conditions of Employment for Licensed Personnel, which includes 5-4.1 through 5-4.9. Article 5, Conditions of Employment, Classified, Non-Licensed, and Support Personnel, which is, includes the policies 5-5.1 through 5.5.8 and then Article 8, Administration, which includes the policies 5-8.1 through 5-8.8. We've also <laughs> included a nice grid for I you like to... Yes, thank you very much. Ginger was wonderful. The um, comments about the changes in each policy, and our hope is that you would gather your questions about the policies, send them our way when we would bring this to the September work session. Questions? No, no, that's good. That's good with everybody, right? Yeah, I've actually asked Ms. Downs if she too could help point me in the right direction to get the former policies. I just like to see the language between, because we're combining policies and mm -hmm. things are moving around. And I just want to make sure I'm not looking at, you know, if I'm looking at something, you know, comparing it to previous policy compared right. to existing. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Changes. No, we'll those two. Okay. I'll send a copy as well. So. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it out to everybody. Then. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions this evening? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank nope. you. Nope. All righty. Anybody got anything else? Then. Oh, man. I moved to adjourn. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather stay here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see. Just getting comfortable. All those in favor, <laughs> all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 You're aye. out. Aye. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> meeting adjourned. <laughs>
Look out, dude.